Hey guys, it's May May, and today I thought I would do something I have never done on my channel, not one single time in two years, and I don't even know how many videos. I've never done a scrapbook page layout. And part of the reason is because I don't really scrapbook, but I got to thinking, <laughs> I really think I might enjoy it. Isn't that funny? I think I might get into scrapbooking. Not so much for the scrapbooking part, but I really like the 12 by 12 canvases where you kind of do this piece of art. And um, I just thought I would try it today. So I'm gonna run through a list of what I'm gonna be using. And I may add some stuff here and there toward the end. I don't know, I may add some dimensional foam and stuff, which I don't have out here, but here's what I'm gonna be using. First, I'm gonna be using some, um, what is this, glittery, not Baker's Twine. What do they call it? It's all covered. I got it on clearance for $1.79 at Hobby Lobby. Um, there's three different skeins of it, and it's... What is it? Glitter Primary is the color of it. It's made by um, We Are Memory Keepers. There's a blue, which is called Twilight, and then gold is Goldilocks, and then Ruby Slippers here is the red. I'm going to be using the red and the gold today, so I'm going to be using that. I'm going to use some Turbo Tacky Glue. I have this stamp that my brother and sister-in-law gave me. I think I told you I have a nephew named Ford, and for one of his birthdays, they used this to make invitations with, which I think is so cute. And they gave it to me after they finished because neither one of them really craft like this. So they gave me this to use, and I'm going to use that today because I think it is so cute. I'm going to use a glitter pen from Secura Jelly Roll. I'm going to use um, a metallic pentail pen, which is silver. Just a regular old writing pen that's a fine tip. My X-Acto knife. A pair of scissors. I have this little paper pack. It's a 6x6 six six paper pad. It's from Doodlebug Designs, and it is called North Pole. I'm going to use a little bit of that. I'm going to use a sentiment from one of my stamp sets, which is called Berry Sentimental. And this actually said, have a berry, Merry Christmas. And I cut off, have a berry. So I could just use the Merry Christmas part. And then a piece of gray paper, just for something we're gonna do in a little bit. Then from that North Pole pack, what I did was I cut out a whole bunch of just little squares of paper. I'll show you what those are for. And some tuxedo black ink. And lastly, um, this is, let me move this out of the way, this is paper from this paper pack, oh not this one, yeah this one, <laughs> and it's called Festivus, which I think is adorable, and I pulled out all the papers from this pack we're going to use, and we'll go through them real quick. This is one of those hot buys from Michaels for five dollars, it was a really good deal. So, let me show you which ones we're going to use. We're going to use this stripey paper, not all of it, just a piece of it. We're going to use some of this graph sort of paper. I'm going to use a sentiment from this page. I'm going to use a portion of this little polka dot and green paper. I'm going to use this page as my background. And then I'm going to use a little bit off of here. Not sure exactly what all. But let's get started because we have a lot to do. Off the bat, I forgot to tell you, you need a little piece of um, red paper. And um, I'm going to use this for my truck stamp. So I'm going to flip this over and do a little stamping. These big stamps like this, make sure you put them face up and do your ink like this. You'll have a lot better result this way. Okay, and then I'm gonna flip this over and stamp it. There we go, look how cute that truck is. And now all we're gonna do is cut this guy out. So I'm not gonna make you watch it, but the cool thing about this is it's got a pretty simple um, layout really, cause it's just kind of a straight line around the edges except for those mirrors, which I do actually cut out. I take the time to fussy cut those, but I will cut this out and we'll get right back together. Okay, so I have fussy cut this guy out, and these are really, really delicate. So if you wanna cut those off and then do something else for your mirrors, you can. But I just really liked them and I wanted to keep them. Now we're gonna spend some time on this guy. I want him to be kind of the focal point of the um, layout. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take that Merry Christmas stamp that I talked about earlier and go ahead and ink it up. And I just think the truck bed needs to say Merry Christmas. <laughs> so I'm going to... Merry Christmas up this truck bed. Somebody mentioned my rocking technique. I found a lot of times with the stamps, maybe 
maybe they don't lay perfectly flat or whatever, if you're able to rock them, it doesn't hurt, but you wanna make sure that if you have ink anywhere on your block, you don't rock, cause you'll get the ink on there. But that's what I did there, did the little Merry Christmas. So cute. Now for some fun. I'm inspired by a couple of people on um in, on YouTube this week. One of them is Christina Werner, and she did an ugly Christmas uh, sweater card, which or an ugly sweater Christmas card. That's more like it. She did that, and it was so cute. And she did a little cutaway and kind of laid her sentiment in, which I thought was amazing. So I'm going to kind of do something like that. I'm going to take my Exacto knife and along the edge of this truck bed, I'm going to cut into this little section cutting right along the line of the truck bed and this is going to allow me to load the back of the truck up with some goodies see that little hole i've put in there so i love that so now let's work on the goodies that are going inside of it so from that noel paper pack i cut these little um squares away that I thought would be good for um, gifts for the back of the truck. And here's what I did. I don't really care if they're straight and perfect and all that. What I really care about is that I have them small enough to do a pretty good shaping of packages. So I'm just going to do some squares in different sizes. Like I'm going to do a rectangle one. And I like this little print. So let's do another kind of tall one for here. And then, let me see what's on the back of this. Polka dots or snowmen? It's on the back of this one. Solid, I don't want red because my truck is solid. Let's do snowmen. Okay, so then here I'm going to cut something like that. All right, and I don't need the rest of these, I don't think. We're gonna see how this works, and if I need any more, I've got them. So here's my plan. I'm gonna go ahead and lay them out in here. This is kind of what I was thinking. One, and here's what we'll do. We'll kind of tuck them underneath our little truck bed, what we've done here. And we're going to load this truck up with gifts to take somewhere. Maybe we're going to grandma's or something. Um, that'd be cute too if you had a picture for your layout that said, you know, that was you guys in the car going to, to wherever you go for Christmas. That would be super cute. Then maybe put this one here. And then this one here. So I'm gonna kinda go with this kind of layout. Maybe tuck this one down a little more. Cause I think what'll make it cute is if they're kinda all over the place. And um, here's what I do to get these ready to go. So I know they're gonna work. I'm gonna place them on my mat, standing up the way they'll go into the truck bed. And I'm gonna take some of this turbo glue and go ahead and run a stripe all the way up the middle of my package, just a Pretty thin stripe of glue up the middle. And then the same over here. And I want that to kind of get tacky, so that's why I'm doing it a little bit quick. Another little stripe. Oops, this guy goes this way, almost messed up. And another little stripe. Okay, now from that string that I showed you from this so where I think is what it's called, string. I went ahead and cut some straight pieces like this. So I have two gold and two red. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to run those pieces into that glue that I just put down. And you wanna make sure you put, if you have one that's got a lot of red, put your gold on that. If you have one that's got a lot of other colors, put your red on that so that you can see them really good. Sit those on there like that. Again, I'm not worried about perfectness because I want this to look like, hey, we threw the stuff in the car. Now, I'm gonna let these sit for a minute and sort of dry before I worry about trimming them. So I'm gonna move them up here for a minute. And now I'm gonna work on some bows. I'm gonna make bows out of this. And this is where my other inspiration, these packets came, or these packages came from Vicki at Clips and Cuts on YouTube, and she did the cutest um, art journal this week, so it kind of inspired this. And I'm just gonna make some bows, bows. looping a piece of the ribbon around my finger, which makes a loop, like so. Then we'll take this bottom piece and wrap it around that loop and using my thumb at the same time. If I can do that, here we go. And that creates another loop for me, and I'm gonna push that string through that loop that comes off of my thumb, and then pull my two loops. Now when I do that, I get a bow, and I will grab the center of the bow, like so. 
This is easier when you're not showing how to do it. Okay, so grab the center of the bow and then shorten my loops. It's going to be hard to see because I'm going to make these teeny tiny, but you'll see what I'm doing. I'm just shortening these loops until they match because I do want little bows. And then I'm going to cut away. And when I do, I'll drop this down and let you see what it looks like. So see that little bitty bow? Maybe you can't see it. There it is. Little tiny bow. I went ahead and did two red ones and two gold ones to save us some time. And I have those right here. So while I tied them, these have been drying. And I'm going to go ahead and take these packages and some good sharp scissors and trim that little piece of ribbon off. I'm not trying to wrap these packages with that ribbon. They're so little, they'd be so fidgety. So once I have all those little pieces of ribbon trimmed off, I'm just going to take my glue and a bow, put a little dot on the knot of it, and where I have red ribbon, I'm going to put a red bow. Now while those are setting up, I'm going to move them out of the way. I'm going to work on the truck a little bit more. I do not want to take a chance of those bows falling off. Here's what I did on the truck. Remember that little gray piece I told you that you would need to? I took the stamp again and I inked up the bumper here. And then I just stamped that onto the gray paper. And then paper pieced this bumper out. I just wanted to take the bumper because I felt like it was a little bit flat on the back. So I went ahead and did one of these to save time. I'm trying to save a little time on the video because it's going to be long. But I went ahead and cut one of these out and I'm going to glue it down onto the bumper just to give it a little bit of color. There we go. And this is where we're going to use those pins I showed you earlier. I took my silver pin, which I love, and I went inside of this little piece just with a little bit of silver. And the thing I like about this stamp is the lines of the image are very crooked and very wiggly. So I'm kind of doing the same thing with my coloring. I don't want it to be perfect because this truck looks a little old and worn. So that I did there, and then I went over here to the mirrors and I colored them in in silver. And then on the tail lights, I did this. Just kind of like a squiggle line, because I wanted this to look more of a reflection. And I noticed um, in a few minutes, this silver, as it dries, it gets a little more flat into the paper. So that's when I used my Secura Jelly Roll pen that is the glitter. And I went over these mirrors, because I wanted some glitter on those. And some glitter on these. Then I also went here and did the same, so I could have a little reflection, as if they were brake lights. Now the next thing I did, once my packages were dry, is I went ahead and opened this up and I put glue along this edge and put my packages inside. But these bows aren't dry, so to save time I want to show you the one I already did. So I'm going to slide these out of the way and I can use those on another one. That's why I kept saying this is what I did. I went ahead and had this one ready. How cute is that truck? Let me hold it up a little bit. Look at that with the little packages in it. The only other thing I did when I finished was this is where I used that fine black pen and I went around the package edges so you could see them really good. If you wanted to, you could ink the edges, but I think this worked because it kind of mimics the line of the stamp. And I just kind of really roughly did like that around the packages. So there you go. There's our truck all ready to go and I'm gonna move it out of the way. Now let's work on our background. I think this is so cute. I love how paper manufacturers kind of make your design for you and they make it really simple for you. Um, what I did was I found in the paper pack some Christmas trees and I just did this rough cut around them like this and kept a little bit of the snow at the bottom. I'm gonna use that in one of the spots. And then on that page I showed you that had all the little sentiments, I cut this out that says Santa brought me. We're gonna use that. I also cut away from one of the pages the Merry Christmas sentiment, and I did it very rough. Do you see how rough that's cut? Because I feel like that's how this is all kind of drawn, kind of rough, so we're kind of mimicking that. 
I'm going to use this somewhere. This is from that stripe paper I showed you. I'm not exactly sure where we're going to use it, but we will. And then I cut this away, which I think is super cute, and I'm going to show you. This was on that stripe paper as well, and it just has kind of some squiggle lines in it, so I cut that one. And I did this very, very rough cut of a piece of the polka dotted paper I showed you. Matter of fact, I need to clean this up a tiny bit, so I'm going to do that again. But I want this to be just a quick, rough cut to match the paper the way it's drawn. And I'm going to use that as well. I told you that I cut this graph paper out. I'm going to take just some of it down here at the bottom. And I'm just going to kind of rough cut almost like a hill or a mountainside or something like that out of it. Just kind of like this going up and out. Just like this. I'm going to use this to help ground my pickup truck. Kind of give it a place to drive. So we'll move this out of the way and we're going to work with this first. Now this is where I'm going to get really, really fussy. This is the thing about scrapbooking that kind of gets to you after a while because you want to be very detailed. Or at least I think it's cute when you're detailed. I'm going to lay this here and I'm going to see which ones of my scallops end at the edge of the paper and I'll show you why. Um, if you can remember by just looking at it, that's great. I won't be able to do that. So I'm going to take this white pen and I'm going to put a dot at this edge of the paper and a dot at this edge of the paper. And now for some fun. So I know this scallop to this scallop is where I'm going. I'm going to take my X-Acto knife. Again, I'm taking this inspiration from Christina this week and I'm going to cut along this white edge all the way around. This will take a minute. But if you're going to save this forever or put it in a 12 by 12 frame or put it on a canvas, this is well worth the effort by the time you're through. So I'm going to take my time and do this. I won't make you watch me, but I am going to cut every one of these all the way around. Okay, so I got all that cut out, and that took about three minutes to do, but I really think in the end I'm going to be glad I did that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of paper, and I'm going to slide it into those little scallops that I cut away, just like so, and glue that in place. See how cute that is? It kind of keeps our border going all the way around the page, and I'm going to glue it in place here along the paper. Look how cute that is. I just love it. Now, one thing I did do when I was cutting it out, it's really hard to stick on those little fine white lines. So I'm going to take my white pen and just kind of go in there and kind of bring those back in. Just really lightly, just kind of messy. Okay, so there's that. Now then, I told you I cut these little trees away. I think these are super cute. And I think that the white will let me kind of put them here or even here because of, um, I think I'm going to do them like that to make them look like they're coming out of the mountain. I think that's super cute. And I'm just going to adhere them straight down. I'm going to actually use the bottom of the trees as my guide point and put them onto the hillside and then just glue that down. I think those look super cute right there. So we're kind of just adjusting the page the way we want it. Now I want to decide where I want to put my truck. I think the truck would be cute right here. And I'm actually going to lift him up. But here's what I'm going to do first. I have this strip of kind of gray paper. And I'm just going to make kind of like a road right here. But I want to make sure it's wide enough for the truck. So I'm going to, I really just want it wide enough for the tires and the underneath. So I'm going to make myself a mark. Showing me how the top should be. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start here and just kind of wiggle edge cut like so. And then just kind of wiggle edge cut here so it looks like a little old paved road. And just cut that away. Now because of the way I did the scallops, I should be able to just slide this down in here because of the way I painted, um, because of the way I glued them. So I may even lift them up a little bit if I have to and get this little guy down in there. I can always glue them back. I'm not going to glue it back yet. I'm going to look at it for a second first and see how my truck does on it. Oh, that's super cute. I'm going to bring it down some because I really want more white around the truck. My gifts got caught in the back. So there's that. And remember how I told you I found this little um, green stripe with the swigglies? I'm going to turn those into tire tracks. So I'm going to put those down here just by cutting a strip about like this. 
and another strip about the same. And now I can start gluing. Not the truck yet, just the papers. Cute, cute. Okay, now I'm gonna use some dimension for the truck. How cute is that? Doesn't that remind you of driving to grandma's? I think it does. I think it's super cute. We always had to drive to my grandmother. She lives so far away. Okay, now then let's work on this piece. This is going to be my photo mat. And I'm going to put it somewhere like in this area. Just really let it be kind of the focal point. And I kind of like it lifted up under these trees. So I'm going to lift those up. Remember, I can always glue them back. No big deal. See how far I want to put that under. That's really good to me right there. So let's glue that down. Now with my photo mat, obviously I don't know what picture is going to go here yet because I haven't made it yet from Christmas, but it won't matter because when I print it out, I just want to make sure it will fit on my mat. So I'll just kind of do some measurements at that point in time and make sure it's right. Let me glue these back down. just like so. Now then I cut this little Merry Christmas out and I thought about, I think I'm going to put it kind of here, just really messy, but I'm only going to adhere one portion of it down so I'll remember where it goes. And then when I put the picture down, I'll save that for that part. So I'm going to take the glue and just put it right here. Now, if you wanted to, you could just do foam squares or something like that, but I know this is just going to be in my craft room until I'm ready to put it all together. So I'm just going to do it like this. And then when my picture's done, I can just lift it and adhere that down. Now then I have this little guy. And I just thought this would be so cute to kind of put a note of what Santa brought us. And I think it'll be cute in this top corner. So I'm going to put that guy down. Again, if you think you're going to need the space for your picture, you might not want to adhere it where it touches here. But again, I can always lift it up and stick the picture under it and be fine. Just kind of like I did this. And I said I was going to use this piece, but I don't really think I need it. Unless I want to put it here and then write something on here about maybe the season or whatever, I think I'll save this for when that come, when I get ready for that. There might be something I want to put. Maybe one of the kids said something funny in the car or something like that. And then in this area, I'll have a good place for journaling. You can even take one of those little pieces that was in the paper pack and put it down here. But I'm going to leave it blank because I may just want to write it myself there. All right, so then the only other thing I want to do before I'm done is take my white pen and I'm just going to kind of go around these edges just with a messy line, kind of like those scallops are, just like this. Again, if you want to wait to do this, you can because you may not know how big your picture is, but I'm going to make my picture fit. So there's that, and I'm going to go back and just do some double lines because I noticed that they're kind of doubled up there also. They kind of double and then kind of cross back over, so I'm just really being kind of messy. Just to kind of make that match. And then, I'm going to take that fine line black pen. I'm going to do the same thing to this one. Just kind of messy. And I'm just kind of mimicking what's on here. Do you see that on the paper? Just kind of like this. And then I'm going to go back over it because that one's kind of like that. This is where details really show whenever you kind of mimic what's on the paper, you kind of go, you know, just let that lead you as to how you're going to design. I love that. I think that's super cute. And I'm going to do it here. It's already done for me there, but I want it here too. This is good for me because I'm a shaker. <laughs> so just put the pen down and move and let it do its thing. And now everything really ties together well. You could do it in the tree. If you just wanted to kind of give it something here. Like that. You can get your white pen and do it in this tree. It's just a lot of fun. I'm going to do the white on here too. Just to make it match. Let's do some black on this one.
the biggest thing is have fun. I think this turned out really cute. I like it a lot. Um, let me know what you guys think for my first ever scrapbook layout. I'm excited to put a picture here and then I'm going to put this on a canvas and Mod Podge it down and um, just really enjoy it. I think it'll be something we'll like putting out every year. So there you go. My first ever scrapbook layout. Y'all let me know what you think and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.